Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and it is tutorial time again. In this tutorial I want to show you a way how to create a really nice digital look for your footage, for your photos or your videos using the Trap Code Form plugin. I recently released a new After Effects template which used this technique and I got a few requests where I can make a tutorial on how to do it. So let's take a quick look at this template preview. You see that it is kind of this digital technical uh, looking stuff going on with these colorful particles. And actually the color of the particles is of course controlled by the footage that you put in. And in this tutorial I want to focus on the trap code form part of this slideshow. So you see the particles coming together, forming our footage, and then they are of course also distorting here on the side and creating this really digitally look. And this is what we are going to do in this tutorial. I will also show you how to do these transitions. I will not show you each single step how to create this slideshow because that would be a little bit too much for a tutorial. But I want to point out, if you like this slideshow, then you can of course also purchase it through my Video Hive profile. Let me show you this quickly. You see that on Video Hive you can purchase the digital corporate slideshow. If you do so, you would help me a lot and support me because then I have a better living and I do not have to do so many freelance jobs. I would have more time to create tutorials and stuff for you guys on my YouTube channel. I also would be very thankful and happy if you take a look and visit my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. On this website, you find all my After Effects templates, stock motion graphics, some freebies, and of course, all my tutorials. You can of course also follow me along on YouTube, on Facebook, on Behance, Twitter, or whatever is your favorite social network. So I would be really glad if you take a look at my website and browse through my templates. Maybe you find something useful for your projects. And now let's get started in After Effects. I will quickly delete my video preview here because I don't need this anymore. So to follow along this tutorial, you need the Trap Code Form plugin. If you do not have Trap Code Form, you can find a link to the trial version download in the video description. Then you can follow along the tutorial, but be aware that the trial version of Trap Code Form will render with a watermark. Okay, so you see that I have already imported a JPEG here, which I will use for this tutorial. And now I want to create a new composition. And this composition will be HDTV 1080 P 25 frames per second. The duration should be around 20 seconds long. And I can name this my main composition. And now I need another composition and this will be my footage one composition. Same size and same duration. And now I need one more composition and this will be my footage mask composition. Footage mask composition. We can also call it footage zero one mask composition so that we know this will be the mask that we set up for our footage one. Okay, so far so good. Now, first of all, let's enter our footage one. And inside this footage one composition, I will drag my photo and then I have to scale it down because it is a little bit big. So approximately like so is fine for now. And now I want to go to my footage one mask composition and I will drag my footage one composition into this footage mask composition. Very good. And now I go to my main composition and drag my footage one mask composition into my main composition. Okay, so let's create a new solid by pressing Ctrl and Y on your keyboard and I will call this solid trap code four. Make sure it's the same size as the composition. And now I will search for my form effect here and drag it on my trap code form layer. So you see now we have this really small square here with a few particles visible and now I have to change this base setup. Therefore we go into the effect controls panel 
and open up the base form. Under the base form, I will leave the standard setting at box grid, but I want to change the size now. So first of all, I want to change the size on the X axis from 200 to 1920. And I want to change the Y size to 1080 because this is exactly the same size as our composition. The C size we can set to one because I do not want many particles in C space. And so I can also change the particles in C to one. And now I can change the amount of particles on the X axis. Let's set it to about 260 for now, and maybe also increase this a bit to 120 on the Y axis. I can change this later on. Now let's move on to the particle setup. And first of all, I do not want these spheres to be feathered. So I set the feather value, the sphere feather value to zero. And I want to increase the size to something like two or even three. Let's see. Yeah, it looks not too bad. Let's set it to four even because then we can see a little bit better what's going on. Now what I want to do, I want to tell Trap Code Form that it shall take over the color from our footage one mask layer. So I go to this Layer Maps tab here and open this up. And in the Layer Maps tab, we find this color and alpha. So open this one up and choose for the layer, the footage one mask. And you see nothing is happening. And this is because we didn't tell it where to map it. So you have to tell Trap Code Form where to map the information that it gets out of this layer. In our case, I want to map the RGB and the alpha channel. So I change from RGB to RGBA. And I want this to map over the X and Y coordinates. And now you see what we have got. We have a strange looking version of our footage. If I turn off my footage mask layer now, I make it invisible simply. Then you see we have this cool digital particles representation of our footage uh, made by trap code form. Okay, so far so good. The next step that I want to create is I want to create this offset in C space. Therefore, first of all, I have to create a new layer map. So let's go into our project window here and let's create a duplicate of our footage one mask composition. And I want to call this footage one displacement map. Actually, I should have called the first composition not mask, but color map, because this is a little bit, a little bit uh, confusing. So let's call it color map. Then we know what we are doing. First this is the color map and this is our displacement map. So let's enter our displacement map and let's put a tint effect on our footage. So I search for my tint effect in my effect and presets panel here and apply it to our footage. What I want to do now is I want to make this a little dull. So I want to get, I want to reduce the contrast. The white should not be fully white and the black should not be fully black because otherwise the displacement would be simply too strong. I will show you this and then it will make more sense. So let's go to the main composition again and let's drag our displacement layer on the bottom of our composition and make it invisible. On our trap conform layer, we can now go to our displacement. You see, we have a few options here. First of all, we can use a layer for X, Y and Z. If I do this and select the displacement map, you see nothing is happening. So why is that? Again, we have no map over. Okay, I will simply choose X and Y. And now you see something is happening and it is displacing. And yeah, but it doesn't look really good. And why is that? So first of all, I want to create a camera. So a layer and new camera that we can see what we are doing. I want to make a 24 millimeters, a little bit of a wide angle, one node camera and press OK. Now let me create another layer and this will be a null object and I will turn this null object 3D and parent my camera to this null object because then I can simply control the rotation of my camera. And you see what trap code form is doing right now. It is displacing the footage, but it's not a cool displacement. So it's not looking good and it's, it's uh, yeah, 
shifting the particles in all directions. And I do not want this. So let's go back to our trap called form layer and let's change the settings for our displacement map. First of all, what I want to do is I want to map these to individual x, y and z axes. And I do not want any displacement on the x-axis, I only want the displacement on the c-axis. So let's choose the layer, the displacement map layer for the c-axis. And now if I increase the strength, you see what is happening. So let's increase it to a negative value because then the displacement is going in the right direction. So let's say around minus 200. And now let's rotate the y-axis of our null object again and see what's happening. And you see that we get this nice 3D displacement of our particles, which is kind of a 3D representation of our photo, which is pretty cool. But we can make this even a little bit better. So first of all, I'll go back to our footage displacement map. And what I want to do here is I want to make this effect a little bit more subtle. So what I want to do is I want to reduce the contrast of our picture. I do not want the white values to be fully white and I do not want the black values to be fully black. Because the displacement map works the following. Everything that is black will not be moved at all and everything that is white will be moved the furthest. So if we take a look at our main composition you see that the white parts here are moving very far and the black parts are not moving at all. So they are staying at the zero or at the center of our composition. And to make this a little bit more subtle, I will go into my displacement map and I will change the map black to uh, kind of a dark gray here, like so. And I want to change the white to another gray, like so. So if I go to my main comp now, you see that the displacement is a little bit more subtle. So I have a bit more control. If I now change this value to a higher value, then I can still create a really dramatic displacement but you see that I have way more of a control here how far this is displacing. So let's stay for now on minus 250 and let's move back to our displacement map and make it a bit more subtle. What I want to do now is I want to add a little bit of a blur to our footage. So I go to my effect and presets panel and type in fast blur and drag it on my footage layer. And let's set this to a value of 5 maybe, even 10, I don't know, let's see. So with a value of 10, let's go back to our main composition and let's take a look. And now you see the displacement gets smoothed out. So if I go back to the displacement layer, but I will lock the composition here so you can see what is happening. And I go here to my fast blur and turn it off. You see immediately that the displacement gets kind of fuzzy or grainy. And if I add the fast blur, you see that it gets smoothed out. And this is exactly what I want. I want to have a smooth and nice displacement. And the higher you push this fast blur, let's say a really high number like 50, then you get a really soft and solid displacement, which is also quite a cool effect, I think, but not really what I want in this case. So let's go back to our main composition and let's unlock this composition for now and play around with the values here. So if I increase this now, you see what this does. It is really very, very soft. Looks kind of cool, actually, but not what I'm looking for. So I want it to be a little bit more, a little bit rougher. So let's go back to the displacement map and set this back to 10 fast blur. Now let's go back to our main composition. And this is more the look that I'm uh, searching. Yeah. OK, now let's add another layer, another map. And this time I want the map to control the size of my particles. So I will simply duplicate my displacement map composition and we'll call it size map. Now let's drag in the size map into our main composition and let's turn it off. On the trap code form layer, in our layer maps tabs, we can find this tab here that's called size. Now let's select our footage size map here and you see nothing's happening because we have not determined which axis it should map. So I want to choose the X and the Y axis and now you see suddenly my particles disappear. So just go back to the particle settings and increase the size. Let's see what we can do here. 
and you see okay now if I turn the size up then the white particles come back or the lighter particles come back but my but my dark particles are still so small that I nearly cannot see them and I do not want this so let's say I want to turn this back to an amount of six and now I go into my size map by just double clicking and I want to play around here a bit again so we still have this tint on it and if I narrow down the contrast even more then I then I can reduce the effect of my size map even a bit more so let's make the black value even brighter like so and let's make the white value a bit darker until we nearly have only a little bit of contrast going on in our picture and let's reduce the fast blur in this case to 5 and now let's go back to our main com and let's take a look what's happening and you see now the effect is a little bit more subtle we still have the difference in size but it's not as harsh as it was before so let's say I will increase the size to about 8 for now just that we can see better what we are doing okay so far so good I think that it looks pretty cool now it's time to create the distortion of the particles along the border of our footage. Therefore, I simply duplicate my footage color map composition by selecting it and pressing Ctrl and D. Now we'll rename this composition and I will call it the footage one mask. Now let's enter this composition and in this composition I want to create a new layer by pressing Ctrl and Y. And let's make sure that this layer is 100% white because this layer will be used as a track mat. So we can call this mask. Now what I want to do is I want to make this invisible for a moment but make sure that it is still selected. And now I select my pen tool I move out a bit and I draw a very rough and quick mask around our business target man guy here. You don't have to be precise at all, just draw a simple mask and close the mask. Now if I turn on the mask layer, you see we have a very rough white mask here. Now what we have to do, we have to change the footage down here to a guide layer, because then the other compositions and especially track code form will not look at the information on this layer. It will only take over the values from our mask layer. Now let's go into our mask settings and change the mask feather to around 220 and maybe bring the expansion a bit in here so don't know 40 50 pixels we have to take a look how this works i will make my footage layer here invisible just to see what i'm doing and you see i have this uh, smooth mask here now okay so let's go back to our selection tool and let's go back to our main composition so the first thing that I want to do is I want to take my footage mask composition and drag it on bottom of my composition of my main composition and make it invisible. Now I want to go into the trap code form. Now I select my trap code form. Now let's go to the trap code form layer and let's take a look at the layer maps and now we need the fractal strength. So under the fractal strength we choose our mask i could also name this fractal map now but i won't do this for now because we will need this for another reason and i want to map this over x and y and you see nothing is happening and this is because i didn't set up any fractal field now so let's move down a bit here and let's open up the fractal field tab here and inside this fractal field we can now increase the displace value so now you see that our footage gets distorted and this is not what we want. We want the outer parts to be distorted, not the inner parts. So normally we would go in here into the fractal strength map and click on inverted. And you see now nothing gets distorted. And this is because we forgot something or I forgot something in my footage mask composition. So let's go back to the footage mask composition and let's create a new layer and a new solid and make sure that this one is 100% black and simply drag it below our mask layer. Now let's go back into our main composition and now you see immediately that something is happening. Now the distortion is working. 
But now for my taste, uh, way too much is distorted. So let's go back and set this mask up a little bit better. So we have to go to the mask layer, press MM, and let's reduce the mask feather maybe to about 150. And let's reduce the mask expansion to about minus 50. Now let's go back to our main composition and take a look. And now you see only really the outer regions of our footage get distorted. And this is exactly what I want. Now let's deal with the distortion. So let's go down here to our fractal field. I actually do not want them to be displaced in all directions because this is, yeah, it's a cool effect, but in my case, I simply want to achieve another effect. So let's go to the rotate tool and let's take a look what this looks like. You see, it's, it's cool, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So let's go back to our trap code form layer and let's change this. In my fractal field settings, I will turn the displacement back down to zero and I want to change the displacement mode from XYC linked to XYC individual. And now I can control the displacement of my particles individually. So I want them to displace quite a bit on the X because this creates this cool digital look. And I also want them to displace on the C axis quite a bit, like so. And later on, I will animate these values over time. But for now, we simply create this bit of distortion. And I also want this fractal field to affect the size of my particles. So let's make this to a value of about five or 10, uh, only that the particles get a little bit bigger. Now what I can do is I can change the fractal noise. And if, I, if you take a look, the noise is moving and it's moving quite a bit and this will not look good only if you are after such a look, but I'm not. So I will take the flow evolution down to a really slow value or a small value like five. So let's see what this does now. I think this is, this is okay. And I also want to change the scale of the noise a bit. So let's play around here a little bit, maybe to something like not too much, like 10. Could also turn down the complexity a bit. You know, you can play around here and create your own look. You can change the minimum and the maximum here. But I'll leave it like it is. And I think complexity of two and So I think I have to increase the scale a bit to about, I don't know, let's see, maybe something like 15, scale 15, complexity two or three, not sure, three maybe. Let's see, I'm just experimenting here. So you see, I have no values in mind for now. And if I now change the X displacement, reduce the C displacement a bit, I think that this looks pretty cool. Yeah. I'm satisfied with this look. Okay, so you see we have a slight motion going on here. It's not too harsh, I think. And we have this really cool displacement of our border particles. If you want to change the amount of visible distorted particles, you can go into our color map and drag in our mask layer. So let's take the footage one mask and drag it on top of our footage one composition. Now let's press F4 to change to the track mat settings and set this to a luma mat. Now you see that we are masking out particles here. And if I go back to the main composition, you see that now the distorting particles are way less. So they are not, not so many are visible. And now I can control the amount of visible distorting particles through my mask settings. So if I go into my mask composition, the footage one mask, and if I change the feathering here, for example, if I reduce it now to about 50, for example, and go back to my main composition, then you see that we nearly have no particles or no distorting particles on the side here. And if I go here and increase this to about 250 and go back to my main comp, then you see we have a lot more distortion going on. So in my case, I will go back, set this to 150, it was quite a good value, and leave it like that. Now we can improve the look of this a little bit. So let's go back to our trap code form layer. And just for now, let's set our displacement strength to zero so that we have our 
flat, more or less flat uh, footage here, because now I want to improve the look a little bit. To improve the look, you can first of all take a levels effect. So let's go to our effect and presets window and let's choose a levels effect. Um, with the levels effect selected, I now can change the white import here. So I want to change the white import. And you see, if I drag this little arrow here to the left, then my colors get a little bit brighter. And sometimes this can help if you use trap cold form to create footage or to if, if particles take over colors of footage, then it can get a little bit dull. And if you use the levels effect, you can get this a little bit brighter or change the look a little bit. So not too much, only a little like so. Looks good. And I could also change the black input, but I think that's not necessary. I think it looks pretty cool. And now let's add a little bit of glow here. So let's search for our glow effect. And I want to use the standard glow, the stylized glow. And this is way too heavy, so I will increase the threshold that only really the brightest parts of my footage here are glowing. So a really high value of about 50 or 95 should be fine. And now I want to change the look of my particles even a bit more. So what I do not like here is I think that my size map is too dull. So let's go back to my size map and let's increase the contrast here a little bit by making the black a little bit darker and the map white to value a little bit brighter. Let's take a look. And yeah, I think that this is better. Now I go to my trap code form settings and close my glow and my levels and open up the form settings. And I want to reduce the particle size down to six again so that they are not so big. And now let's go, let's close this up quickly and let's go to the glow effect and reduce the glow size here to about six or seven. I think this looks quite good. Okay, so now I'm really satisfied with the look of my particles here and of my footage. Now we can create the animation part. So first of all, I want to create an animation for my displacement. So let's move our time marker to frame zero. And let's go to trap code form and let's open up our layer maps. And inside the layer maps, inside the displacement map, I will animate my strength here. So let's set a keyframe. Let's take a look here. I will change the active view to two views because I want to see the top view right here. And I will increase the strength now. Let's see how far we can take this. Oh, I have to go to a negative value. So you see this looks pretty cool. And I want to even take this further so we can really make this quite big. Let's say a value of minus 1100 as a starting point here. Let's set a keyframe at frame zero. And let's say that this transition will last about two seconds. So after two seconds, or maybe after three seconds, don't know, we can change this later on. I will set it to minus 80. I don't want it to be completely flat. I still want some depth in here. Maybe I increase it to minus 120 to get a little bit more depth here. Or maybe even more. This is too much, so let's say 180, minus 180, ah, too much, 150, yeah, let's, let's leave it on 150 for now. And what I want to do now is I want to create a quick camera animation. So let's move our cursor here in frame zero. Let's select our camera and let's take a look here and you see what the camera is doing and I reset my rotation on the camera control. I should rename this here to camera control. And normally I select both of these layers and select one color so that I know that these two are linked together. Okay, perfect. And now I want to create a slight camera movement. So I know that in the end of this camera move, after about three seconds, let's say, or maybe I speed it up later on, you will see. I want the camera to rest in the more or less the same position as it is now. So on a C value of minus 1280. Let's set a keyframe here. And now in the beginning, it should travel through all these particles. So we'll move it forward 
until we don't see any particles anymore. And this is approximately right here. So a value of around 720 pixels is fine. So let's go back to our one view and let's create a quick run preview and see what this does. And now you see we are traveling through our particles. It's cool, but a little bit boring. So what we want to do is we want, of course, to add a little bit of a rotation here. So first of all, let's go back here and let's set the rotation of our cam control layer. So not the camera, but the cam control. Uh, I want to change the Y rotation to a value of, let's say, minus 90 degrees. I don't know, maybe this is too much, but I will try. And add a keyframe on frame number zero. Now let's move out here. And I want this to stop at around minus 20 degrees. Let's see what this does. Now you see, now we have this really cool path here through our, through our particles. Maybe the minus 90 is a bit too much. Maybe I want to start at minus 70 because then the path is a little bit more interesting through the particles. And this looks quite good. Uh, okay, there are a few visible in the beginning, so we can change the X amount here, the X position of the camera until we see no more particles. So let's say 850 is good. Okay, now we have the basic animation of our particles and the basic animation of our camera. So I will make a quick round preview. And you see, if you take a close look at the border here, and this is always a little bit of a problem that you have to work around. So if we play this now, this RAM preview, you see that the particles on the side here are flickering around. And this is because uh, we are moving through the noise and this is distorting or, or moving our particles. I do not want this to happen. So I want them to stay in place. And this is why I will uh, turn off the, the fractal influence for now. So let's go to our trap called form layer and let's go to our displacement here. So at the end of our transition animation, set a keyframe for the X displays and for the C displays and set them both to zero. Because now the particles are not displaced, nothing will move around here. And the same we will do for the size. So effect size, keyframe and zero. Now let's take a look at these keyframes here. And now we can, you know, over the next two seconds or three seconds, we can increase these values. So let's say we had a displacement on the X of about, I don't know, we can increase this quite a bit. Let's say 1200 is a good value. And on the C axis also quite a bit, you know, that this gets really interesting, like 1800, probably two seconds is way too fast now. So let's increase this duration to about five seconds. Let's see, now it's nicely floating apart here. Yeah, I think that this looks pretty cool. And of course, I also want to increase the size effect. This can happen a little bit quicker. So let's change the size to five at around five seconds. Let's see. So now let's select all these keyframes, right click and go to the easy ease function. You can press F9 on your keyboard as well. This creates a little bit of a smoother curve here. And I think that this should be okay for our tutorial animation here. You can play around with the timing here on your own and create your own look. But for me, I think this is pretty good. The only thing I want to do is I want to increase the size effect. So let's say effect this by 15. Looks quite good. Yep, like so. So I want them to get bigger when they are distorted. Okay, pretty cool. Now we do the same. We will simply select these keyframes here and easy ease them too. Keyframe assistant, easy ease. 
so our whole animation gets a little bit smoother. Okay, now let's say we want our footage to be visible for about 5 seconds, so at around 8 seconds I will change the Y rotation on my camera control layer from minus 20 to plus 20. And now we have this smooth transition here, or this smooth rotation I should say. And then in the end we can move away from our element again, so let's set a position keyframe on our camera position and let's move out for three seconds here and let's pull back quite a bit like minus 4000 okay and in the end here we can fade out the transparency of our or the opacity of our trap cold form layer so set to keyframes from 100 to 0 Easy ease them, and that's good. And one more thing I want to add, in the end when we are moving out, I want my whole footage to be displaced. And this is also very simple to do. Simply set your cursor, your time marker at around 9 seconds, and then enter our footage mask composition. And what we are going to do here is we will fade out the mask. So we will simply change the opacity here. So select the layer, press T for opacity or transparency, set a keyframe and over two seconds we will set this to nearly, I don't know, 40 or whatever. And again, easy ease these keyframes. I would recommend you that if you create a really a nice or if you want to create a really nice professional looking project that you do not only easy ease these values but to go into to go into the graph editor and really play around with these curves and create nice dynamic motions but for this tutorial I will leave this because yeah it takes too much time and I'm here to show you the technique of the particle setup so what the changing of our mask does is that after a while when the transparency of our mask fades you see that the whole the whole footage gets distorted quite a bit and this is a pretty cool effect together with the fade out okay so i think this is really looking quite good i want to add one more detail and this is i want to add some depth of field so let's select the camera layer let's press aa on our keyboard and let's turn on the depth of field and now nothing is happening uh, why is nothing happening i can increase the aperture here so let's say a value of 50 maybe and now you see something is starting to happen but we need to increase this quite a bit more so 200 and now something is happening definitely and this looks not too bad but the distance the focus distance is just a little bit out of place so let's activate our second view for a moment and now we will take a look here so in the beginning so let's say at second number one i want this focus distance to be really close to our camera so let's decrease the focus distance and do something like yeah maybe something like 420 is a good value here and set a keyframe let's press u here to reveal a keyframe now let's move on to second number two and let's say that in this case I want this part here to be in focus so I will increase the distance a bit like 700 around 700 and it creates an automatic keyframe here and in the end of my movement I want this focus to be exactly here right in the middle of my footage And this is pretty cool. Okay, so let's change to one view again. And now what we're going to do as a final step, I will add a quick background and then I will make a preview render of what we created. So let's go to a new layer, layer new solid. This will be our background, VG. 
OK. Drag it down here. So I will pre-compose this quickly by pressing Ctrl, Shift and C on my keyboard and create a background composition because I want to add a few elements here. Now let's go to our background. Let's create a second new layer, a new solid. And I want to make this such a very quite a dark blue here. OK. OK. And now I want to create some masks. I take my ellipse tool. Let's say here in the bottom I want to have one mask and press MM to reveal the mask properties and fade it out quite a bit or feather it quite a bit. Decrease, increase the mask expansion just to make some kind of a floor here like so. Now create another mask MM feather it Increase this a bit like so and another one right here mm feather it quite a bit okay so doesn't look too good but it doesn't matter should be enough for the tutorial maybe I will decrease the opacity a bit to about 80% so let's go back to the main com and see it adds a little bit of something at least and now I will create a preview render in full quality of our 11 seconds and I will see you when the preview render is finished. Okay so the rendering has finished so let's take a look at the outcome of our tutorial. The particles animation is quite nice but I do not like the camera animation so much so I would spend here a bit more time to play with the graphs and with the keyframe interpolations but this is something that I leave to you you can play around here a little bit longer I think that the tutorial is already long enough and I think that the outcome is quite cool so really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial I thank you very much for watching so let me remind you that if you want to save a lot of time you can also purchase this digital corporate slideshow on video hive you see that it's a lot of work to set these effects up, especially if you create a long slideshow and add all the details. So you can save quite a bit of time if you want to use this effect in one of your projects. I also want to invite you to visit my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. There you can browse through all my After Effects templates. Maybe one of them can help you out for one of your projects. You can, of course, also find stock motion graphics, freebies and my other tutorials and I also offer freelance motion design services. If you want to be up to date then please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook. If you have any questions feel free to contact me anytime. You can write a comment here under this video or you can use my contact page or also my email address which you find on my or also my email address which is displayed up here. So thanks again for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.